Today we're getting into the latest Tesla news, including Cybertruck already capable of wireless charging, new software features finally arriving on all Teslas, another Tesla hacked, and more. So let's get into it, and a special thanks to DraftKings for sponsoring a portion of this video. First up today, Tesla has just hit a pretty huge milestone with their most popular car, the Model Y. Last year, Tesla made history with the Model Y becoming the best-selling vehicle in the world for 2023. That's a huge milestone as it's the first time that an electric vehicle has ever held that spot. Elon Musk predicted that this would happen before the car even launched, and despite doubts, they've managed to turn their electric SUV into a worldwide phenomenon. In order to have the best-selling car in the world, you need a production capacity that can handle that level of demand. French data firm Innovev has just published data that shows the Model Y was the most produced car in 2023. The Toyota RAV4 and Ford F-Series trucks have long held the top spots on this list, and this year Tesla has beaten them both for the top spot. In third place was the F-Series, which produced 933,517 units last year. Ahead of that in second place was the Toyota RAV4 at 989,517 units. Then in first place, with a pretty substantial lead, is the Tesla Model Y having produced 1,137,885 units. That puts them nearly 150,000 units ahead of the next highest vehicle and over 200,000 ahead of the F-Series. Tesla has created a huge lead for themselves as they enter a new era for the company and this car. On one hand, they are expanding into new markets like South America, where they opened their first store in Chile. On the other hand, Tesla is expected to have a bit of a sales slump as we progress further into 2024. The company told investors earlier this year that they are between two growth phases and that there may be a drop in growth for now. This is expected as Tesla gets ready to refresh the Model Y and launch their next generation vehicle likely next year. They're also ramping the Cybertruck currently as well. It's also notable that Tesla's next highest produced vehicle is the Model 3, which comfortably sits in the top 10. Last year, they produced 636,519 Model 3 units. Tesla just launched the new refresh of that vehicle, which includes some really great improvements and features, but that's likely to have slowed down production of that vehicle just a bit. Tesla has been in a great spot for a while now, and it's going to be interesting to see how their position evolves throughout the year. They've got a lot of big shifts coming soon, and time will tell how they adapt to them. Either way, their laser focus on very few models being pretty simplified does seem to be working. Next up today, we have a number of new features coming to Tesla vehicles soon, some on the software side and others on the hardware side for charging. First, Tesla is in the process of releasing a new software update that actually improves a feature that isn't on most new Tesla vehicles. For a while, Tesla was outfitting their cars with ultrasonic sensors as an added tool to help the car navigate tight spots. These are very standard sensors for all vehicles. Tesla vehicles with those sensors have had access to Tesla's auto park and smart summon features for years now if you upgraded to enhanced autopilot or full self-driving. Those features did admittedly have some shortcomings, but it was a pretty cool thing to have. A few years later, Tesla made the decision to remove all ultrasonic sensors from their vehicles, to instead rely on a system of cameras that they call Tesla Vision. When they made this move, however, all vehicles that did not have ultrasonic sensors lost access to the auto park and smart summon features. So for a while now, older Tesla vehicles have actually had a bit more functionality than their newer counterparts. These were features that only come as part of the enhanced autopilot and FSD package, as I mentioned, and while Tesla still says they are features, they actually haven't been. In the most recent holiday update, Tesla introduced a new feature to Tesla Vision called High Fidelity Park Assist. The car's onboard computer is able to process the camera feeds to create a 3D modeled map of your surroundings. This feature is currently only available on cars without ultrasonic sensors, but they are working on bringing it to older models. Still, Auto Park and Summon have been unavailable for new cars, even if you paid for that upgrade. Now though, it looks like these features could be coming quite soon and could be improving drastically for customers that already have them. Tesla employees have access to the latest version of Auto Park that brings some pretty cool improvements. Previously, the car would only display a single available parking spot at once, and even then, it wouldn't always come up on screen reliably. Now, the new version will mark the suggested spot while also highlighting all available parking spots nearby, including parallel spaces. Last year, Elon told us that they were working on a new tap to park feature, where the car would identify parking spaces, and then you tap on one, exit the vehicle, and it parks there. We don't have any indication in the release notes whether you can exit the vehicle while it parks, but that seems to be Tesla's end goal for this feature. Some code in the most recent app update suggests that soon you will be able to start auto park using your phone. Since this is fairly similar to what the app can already do when you summon the car, it doesn't sound too outrageous that it could work in the other direction. Of course, it is quite different though when the vehicle is ending up away from you rather than where you are. As for Smart Summon, Elon Musk recently said that actually Smart Summon and a new auto park feature called Banish with quote major improvements would come next month. 
That would mean that they would come in April if it arrives on time. And based on software version numbers, it seems to be in the employee testing phase right now. We've heard a lot of promises over the years for this technology, including what Elon said in 2016 that, quote, in around two years, someone should work anywhere connected by land and not blocked by borders. For example, you're in LA and the car is in New York. Eight years later and nothing close to this has arrived, but confidence is growing after the public has been beta testing FSD 12.3. It actually brings a number of noticeable improvements over all previous versions and is getting people excited. Most important first though, Tesla needs to deliver these features even in their currently available form to vehicles without ultrasonic sensors. Customers who bought Enhanced Autopilot and the FSD packages were promised these features, and those features are still listed on their website, but they are not actually available. The next big feature involves charging, and it's something that the Cybertruck appears to already be somewhat capable of. Wireless EV charging has been something talked about for a long time, and we have seen Tesla hint that they're working on this and even talk about it directly. Of course, we haven't expected to see anything there soon, but it appears the Cybertruck is partially ready for wireless charging as shipped today. During Monroe's teardown of the Cybertruck, they noted that they found an open connector. When asking what it is, the lead engineer for the Cybertruck replied saying, don't forget you can always check our publicly available service documentation. You don't have to figure it all out on your own. In the service manual, we can see a Cybertruck part that specifically says AC compressor and inductive charging headers. And then Drew Baglino, Tesla's senior VP of powertrain and energy, seemed to hint further that this is what we think it is. What this means is that the Cybertruck, as produced today, is ready for wireless inductive charging. Now, there are still other parts necessary for this, and you can't simply pull up to an existing wireless vehicle charger and expect it to work. But it appears the Cybertruck already has the necessary hardware that a retrofit of an inductive charging pad could be possible. So once Tesla gets there and is working on shipping the wireless charging pads they have teased in renders, Cybertruck owners should be able to get a retrofit to enable this on their trucks. Tesla absolutely future-proofed charging on this truck for the future technology they are working on, and that's incredibly cool to see. Of any first vehicle for Tesla to include wireless charging on as well, it's the Cybertruck. But time will tell how long it takes for the rest of the parts of this equation to arrive, how much it costs, and how efficient it will be. Either way, it's very cool to see. Next, I'd like to thank today's sponsor, DraftKings. DraftKings Pick 6 is a new way to play daily fantasy sports in the NBA, PGA, NHL, and NFL. Today, I've teamed up with DraftKings for a special offer for new players. Basketball season is heating up with bigger plays and even bigger wins. Select two to six basketball players and choose if they're gonna be more or less of a stat. Then track your lineup and compete against other players for a shot at huge cash prizes. Get in on the action now for that special offer. New customers can earn a 100% instant deposit match of up to $100 in pick six credits when they deposit just $5 or more. Getting started is easy. Download the DraftKings Pick 6 app today, then use my promo code RyanShaw when signing up. That's code RyanShaw only on DraftKings Pick 6. The crown is yours. Next up today, a group of hackers have just found a big vulnerability in Tesla software that earned them a pretty big payday as a result. Now that may sound a bit scary, but in truth, here's why it's actually a good thing. As a modern tech company, cybersecurity is one of Tesla's greatest concerns. Malicious hackers around the world can pose a huge threat to both the company and its customers, so Tesla is constantly working to improve their current security systems. They are always investing in improving their defenses and work very closely with white hat hackers to find security exploits early. Tesla very frequently works with the competitive hacking competition Pwn to Own, where groups of hackers around the world compete to find security exploits in exchange for big prizes. This method encourages hackers to find flaws in their systems before they could potentially be exploited by hackers with less benevolent intentions. For example, a Pwn to Own competition was held earlier this year in Tokyo, where a team of cybersecurity researchers called Synactive used a chain of bugs to hack Tesla's infotainment system. The team had so far won $400,000 from Tesla for identifying exploits, and this competition netted them another $100,000 prize. This strategy has allowed Tesla to identify and patch a ton of vulnerabilities over the years. And now we have the latest example. Synactive has been on a roll when it comes to hacking Teslas, and their streak didn't stop in Tokyo. Another Pwn to Own event was just held in Vancouver, Canada, where Synactive managed to hack into Tesla's electronic control unit and vehicle CAN bus. These pieces both control and allow for communication between the many different electronic systems within the vehicle. For their efforts, the team was awarded a $200,000 cash prize and a brand new Model 3. 
Tesla's vehicles take a very interconnected and software-based approach that on one hand offers a ton of benefits like over-the-air software updates, but can also leave them open to more security vulnerabilities like these. Hacking competitions like these allow for Tesla to fix the potential downsides of this level of interconnectivity without sacrificing a feature that makes their cars so great. Even though it may sound scary at first to hear that Teslas are being hacked all the time, in this case, it's actually a great thing that helps to keep your car even safer. Next up today, Tesla has just reached an agreement that will allow them greater access to one of the world's largest markets. With a population of well over a billion people, greater access to the Indian market could be a major next step for Tesla. The brand doesn't have much of a presence in that country so far, mainly because import tariffs have been prohibitively expensive for EVs. Tesla and India have been in negotiation for years on how they can avoid those tariffs, but until now it hasn't led to anything concrete. Tesla wants to first start introducing their cars to the Indian market and then gradually build up the supporting infrastructure there, such as service centers and superchargers. So far, these tariffs have kept Tesla from getting a foothold in the country, and India has been unwilling to budge unless Tesla built a factory there. In the last year, we've seen some pretty significant progress on this issue. Elon Musk promised that Tesla would soon be making a major investment in India, and in response, the government there has just announced a new program that would help the deal along. They said, quote, the union government has approved a scheme to promote India as a manufacturing destination so that e-vehicles with the latest technology can be manufactured in the country. The policy is designed to attract investments in the e-vehicle space by reputed global EV manufacturers. This plan allows for EV manufacturers to access lower import tariffs on EVs for five years, but there are some strict requirements that have to be met. First, the company must make a minimum investment of approximately $500 million. Second, the company must establish an EV factory in the country within three years with a localization rate of 25%. That must grow to 50% by the end of its fifth year. Lastly, automakers that use this deal can only import 8,000 vehicles per year for a grand total of 40,000 cars over the five-year period. Reports have recently indicated that Tesla is very close to a deal that would lead to them building a factory in the country. We're not sure when that announcement may come, but India definitely has huge potential for the company. This deal is mutually beneficial. Tesla gets access to a new major market, and India gets the economic boost of having a major automaker set up shop there in the future. This update certainly points to Tesla making an announcement soon, but for now, we'll keep a lookout for the latest as it develops. Next up today, one of the biggest pieces of Tesla's growth going forward is battery production. They are adding their own battery production into the fire here so that they can help support the vehicles they are making. For instance, the Cybertruck is made exclusively with cells that Tesla makes all themselves at Giga Texas. They have been very clear that this is simply adding to the capacity that they get from suppliers as they keep growing vehicles. But now Tesla has hired a new executive to help increase the production efficiency of battery cells. In the last few years, Tesla has begun ramping their energy cell manufacturing, as I mentioned, and has seen some great success from it. At their Battery Day event in 2020, they unveiled their new 4680 battery cell that would go on to be used in both the Model Y and Cybertruck out of Giga Texas. Production of those cells seems to be going well so far, with Tesla's senior vice president of energy engineering, Drew Baglino, saying that they have weeks of battery inventory on standby. We also just got an update that Tesla made enough 4680 battery cells in a single week to support 1,000 Cybertrucks. Still, despite their apparent success, Tesla definitely sees room for improvement in the cell's production. Since the battery day event, Tesla has not reached the energy capacity, power output, or cost reductions that they talked about there. In that time, Tesla has apparently struggled with production of the cathode mix and dry electrodes that go into these batteries. To help combat these issues, Tesla has just hired a semiconductor expert to help improve battery production out of Giga Texas specifically. John Paul Daly, a former semiconductor engineer, has now listed on LinkedIn that he is the new head of Tesla's tablets and assembly operations, where he will look for new ways to improve production efficiency. Elon has spoken publicly about Tesla looking to the semiconductor business as inspiration, based on their ability to produce highly precise products at a large scale. It makes sense that Tesla would be looking to hire semiconductor experts then, if they want to incorporate those strategies into their manufacturing processes. Tesla is always working to improve their production efficiency, and steps like these should help a lot to increase battery production even further. On the other side of things with Tesla batteries, two men in New York have been charged with trying to sell secret information regarding Tesla's batteries. District attorneys in the Eastern District of New York released a statement regarding two people who are accused of attempting to sell Tesla trade secrets. The document does not explicitly refer to Tesla by name, instead calling them the victim company that is a US-based leading manufacturer of battery-powered electric vehicles and battery energy systems. That sounds very vague, but once you read through the lines, it starts to become clear that Tesla is likely who's being referred to here. 
The two accused are former employees of Highbar Systems, a Canadian company that Tesla acquired back in 2019. Two defendants started a company after departing Highbar, where they sold technology used in the production of EV batteries. The DA alleges that the company's assembly lines used proprietary Tesla technology, and that they even advertised their products as parts made for Teslas. Two undercover agents met with the accused at a trade show where they claimed to be interested in buying a battery production line. The agents were able to successfully get the alleged to send them a proposal that includes Tesla's battery assembly trade secret information. One of the accused is currently in custody and could face a 10-year prison sentence while his accomplice is still at large. This is a pretty crazy story that sounds like something out of a spy movie. Corporate espionage and stealing of trade secrets is something that companies have to deal with, however, and Tesla is definitely no exception. I'd be very curious to know just how many cars are out there right now that have parts that were using these stolen trade secrets. This is a really wild series of events, and I'm definitely interested to learn more about what companies were affected by this. Most large and reputable companies probably wouldn't get wrapped up in this, but you never know who may have fallen for it or decided to do it anyway. Last up today, some updates from other automakers. In charging news, NACS cables are starting to appear on ChargePoint branded EV charging stations across North America. If you're unfamiliar, NACS is Tesla's charging connector that is now becoming standard in North America. ChargePoint recently posted on X that they are beginning to install NACS cables for installation on any of their licensed DC fast chargers. ChargePoint stations offer a modular design that allows them to be easily retrofitted into NACS compatible chargers. Teslas are currently able to use existing charge charge point stations, but it requires the use of a CCS adapter to plug in. With a built-in NACS option, however, that is going to significantly streamline the charging process for these cars and the many cars that will soon be adopting this standard. Currently, the company is offering NACS cables for four of their models, the HomeFlex, CPF50, Express250, and Express Plus PowerLink. They are also actively working on bringing it to their own charging stations, including the CP6000 and Express PowerLink 2000. ChargePoint is selling new stations with Tesla compatible connectors and is working with station owners to make the new NACS connectors available for use, quote, as fast as possible. It's really exciting to see the increased rollout of NACS technology onto third-party charging stations. As more chargers adopt this new standard, that is going to greatly increase the availability of accessible charging infrastructure and make the adoption of all future EVs even more enticing. This is a very exciting time for electric vehicles, and I can't wait to find out who adopts NACS next. Essentially, this is changing from Tesla owners needing a CCS adapter to everyone else, in the meantime, needing an adapter to NACS, which makes sense since there's a lot fewer cars on the road that are non-Teslas. The driverless taxi company, Zooks, has just announced that they are expanding their operations in their two major markets, California and Nevada. In addition, they have expanded service to include more available routes, longer service hours and more weather conditions, and higher top speeds. Zooks is a unique driverless tech company because rather than converting pre-existing EVs, they have built their own custom car for this purpose. They are equipped with tons of cameras and LiDAR sensors that allow them to remove the pedals and steering wheel entirely from the design. So far, they have been conducting tests in Foster City, California, and in a small loop in Las Vegas, Nevada. The cars are currently software limited to 45 miles per hour, but as they continue testing, it should eventually open up its full 75 mile per hour top speed. As of right now, they are not yet offering rides in the public, but the company is optimistic that they may commence soon. This company is approaching self-driving a bit more slowly than Tesla, but even in their early stages, they are offering a pretty exciting look into the future. We'll have to see how well this company expands their services and how their technology shapes up on the roads compared to other leaders in self-driving technology. That's all the latest Tesla news for today, so in the meantime, if you want to see the latest leaks for Tesla's next car, you can check out that video linked up here or in the description below. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.